So nothing was required of me, but the truth be told, after the Honorable Eric Evelyn, anybody who comes after will have difficulty. And so I will stick to what I know. I'm delighted to be here this evening at the launch of the Concerned Citizens Movement campaign for the federal elections 2020. I believe you've heard from the Honorable Eric Evelyn, you've heard from the Honorable Alexis Jeffers, and it is only for me now to wrap things up. I am absolutely proud of the team that we have assembled. The Honorable Eric Evelyn replaces the Honorable Vance Amory. And like the others before me, I take a moment to say to the Honorable Vance Amory that his time with us has been exceptional. That he has served the people of Gingerland and the people of Nevis and the wider federation with distinction. And whilst he could not be here with us tonight, I know that he's here with us virtually. I am advised that on every platform that this meeting is going live on, that people are there. And right now we are here at campaign headquarters for our 2020 campaign, campaigning in a different way, a different way to how we are accustomed to campaigning because of this COVID-19 pandemic, we are not allowed to have the crowds. We have just a very, very few people here with us, but we have thousands of people with us online. And I say good evening to one and all, those who are here at home and those who are abroad. COVID-19, ladies and gentlemen, has tested us in a way that nothing in the last century has tested the world. St. Kitts and Nevis has been no exception, but I have said from the outset that what we need was steady, calm, sober leadership. And perhaps the Lord knows why he has Timothy Harrison, St. Kitts, and Mark Brantley and Nevis at this time. Because this was not a time for panic. This was not a time for people to lose faith. This was a time for us to come together to fight this unseen enemy. And I am proud, proud of Nevis, proud of our health workers, proud of our COVID-19 task force headed by Dr. Judy Nisbet, that tonight, as we stand here, we have no COVID cases on the island of Nevis. Tonight, as we stand here, that our four confirmed cases have fully recovered. That our students who came home from Jamaica were all tested and all returned negative tests and have gone home to be with their families. It is a proud moment for us as a small island but it is demonstrative of how the division people always rise to the occasion. And every time that we've had challenges, we have risen to the occasion. And ladies and gentlemen, if you wanted any indication of our ability to govern, of our ability to lead, this was the occasion. And I want to thank all my cabinet members. You have seen some here tonight, our ministers, you have seen our candidates, but they all worked hard, food security, social safety net, agriculture, you name it, they were there and they were lending their fullest support. I am privileged to stand here as the leader of Nevis, as a representative for the people of number nine, because I have an excellent team with me and I thank them all. Now, ladies and gentlemen, there's been a lot of chatter. There's been a lot of noise in the public spaces on radio, there's been noise. On Facebook and social media, there's been noise. I have adopted a saying, you know what my saying is? Ignore the noise. Because I had an old aunt called Elise, and she used to say, if you kick at every barking dog, you'll never get up the hill. And we want to get up the hill. We want to get up the hill. Nevis must advance itself. And when I look sometimes at those that are making the noise, the only thing that they've ever succeeded at in life is nothing. And so I don't pay attention to that noise. I have seen our opponents making heavy weather of the fact 
that the CCM is running the same candidate for local elections and federal elections. And I say to them that the CCM has always run the same candidate for local and federal elections. In the last 30 years, that is the CCM tradition. And because they have been unable to succeed, they have now said they change their constitution. Well, if you want to change your constitution, that's your business. It has nothing to do with me, and it has nothing to do with my party. My party has a process, and my party has said that the three candidates that we have fielded in this election, the three persons that we feel at this point can take Nevis further, those three are the Honorable Eric Evelyn in Nevis 10, the Honorable Alexis Jeffers in Nevis 11, and yours truly, the humble servant from Nevis 9. And I'm saying that our message is a simple message. You must strengthen the hand of the Concerned Citizens Movement. You must strengthen the voice of Nevis in Bastyr. We must be at the table in order to ensure that the island of Nevis and the people of Nevis get their fair share, their full share. I hear this argument that Nevis got some $200 million and Nevisians cussing about it. I thought the argument would have been we didn't get enough. But to the contrary, they are abusing and cursing that Nevis got something. Let us recall that when they were there, Nevis got nothing. So they are upset and they say that we are going to beg cap in hand. How is it you go to beg cap in hand for what belongs to you? You're not begging. You're simply asking for it to be handed to you because it belongs to you. I have made the point over and over that the people of Nevis under Team Unity have not received a single cent of taxpayer money from St. Kitts. What we have benefited from are the proceeds of the Citizenship by Investment program. And when I look at my passport, I see it's a big and broad, St. Christopher and Nevis. So if it says St. Christopher and Nevis, and money comes into the country as a result of that passport that says St. Christopher and Nevis. Why are we in Nevis upset that the island of Nevis gets a share from those proceeds? And so I say to you, ignore the noise. Let us focus because it is important that the people of Nevis speak with one voice. I am always concerned when I'm in St. Kitts, I'm in the parliament. And I'm seeking to advance the cause of my beautiful island of Nevis. That the Honorable Vance Emery is there seeking to advance the cause of our beautiful island and people of Nevis. That I hear the one person from the NRP stand up and say, Nevis don't need nothing. Singing a different tune. Singing a different hymn. Singing in a different church. Rang Sankey. And we are trying to say to our people that it is time that we sing from the same hymn sheet, in the same pew, in the same church, that Nevis must be about promoting the island of Nevis. Because if Nevis is strong, then the Federation is strong. And we must not shy away from that. We must not resile from that that it is important that we have the strongest voice available to us in Bastyr. And the only way we can do that is to ensure, ladies and gentlemen, that we are at the table. And so, ignore the noise. I have come tonight to say that the Concerned Citizens Movement has three candidates. I heard us refer to as Hebrew boys. We have not been boys in a while, so perhaps Hebrew men might be more appropriate. But three candidates. And I like the way the Honorable Erica Evelyn put it, because he said that he comes with his honesty, his integrity. And you look at us, and no matter how hard they have tried, we are unblemished. No baggage, as the gentleman put it, the Honorable Eric Evelyn, not even hand luggage. We have not even packed a toothbrush. We have nothing but clean hearts and clean hands coming to work for the benefit of the people of Nevis. 
And that is why we have been able to rise to the challenge in this pandemic. We have, in this pandemic, as a cabinet, decided that cabinet ministers will surrender 10% of their salaries for the next three months. This is the second time that CCM has taken a pay cut. When we got in in 2013, we did the same thing. In my case, I have said I will forego 100% of my salary and benefits as Premier. We know that it is symbolic, but we wanted to send the right signal to say to the people of Nevis that hard times have come to us. And we know that, we are experiencing it, and we will bear those times with you. We have not stopped there. We have dug into our pockets for $13,500 for the next three months. Each month we will provide that sum for groceries for those who need it. To ensure we have said that no family in Nevis will go hungry during this pandemic. And I am so pleased to the grace of God that that act of generosity has spurred others to be equally generous so that in the first month of that program, that $13,500 became $24,150. And we were able, through the grace of God and the generosity of the many, to make contributions to 161 families across the length and breadth of Nevis. And I will say to you tonight that next month we're going to do the same. And in July, we are going to do the same. And we will continue to do the same for as long as we need to because the people of Nevis have always and will always matter most to the Concerned Citizens Movement. And so, ladies and gentlemen, we have brought three candidates. We are in a new environment with this virtual meeting. We understand that we will have to find creative ways to get our message out. But I'm saying to you that when we consider what we're up against, when we consider the opposition, that I believe this task should be easy. I believe that the people of number 11, the good people of St. James and the good people of St. Thomas's, that those people must ask themselves, you have been sending a man to Bastia for the past 20 years. What has he done? Can you point to one thing there's a Calypsonian in Sinkis who says something about show me your trophy. Can you point to one thing that you've done in the parish of St. Thomas's, in the parish of St. James, that the people can say because of this representation from this gentleman, we have been able to achieve that? The answer is no. There is absolutely nothing. In St. Kitts, my good friend Marcel Alibert built a public bath. Not even that Patrice Nisbet has delivered in Nevis. And so I said to you, the people have a clear choice. Do you send back someone who is not productive, who doesn't produce anything, or do you give Alexis Jeffers a proven warrior for Nevis an opportunity? I will tell you, when we march into Bastia and into Church Street, and I know that with me, shoulder to shoulder, I have Alexis Jeffers and Eric Evelyn. I believe the people of Nevis can be assured that they will get the full fruits of their citizenship. They can be assured that they will get the best representation in Bastia. And whatever portfolios we hold, the people of the Federation can be assured that we will represent them well. You have seen my work as foreign minister. I don't believe that there ought to be any doubt of the quality of representation that comes out of Nevis. We are capable, we are able, we have always been capable and able. And we will continue to demonstrate that at home and in St. Kitts. Ladies and gentlemen, this election provides a marvelous opportunity for us to speak with one voice, to speak clearly, cogently, and to be together in the cause of advancing our island home and our people. We must be at the table. Somebody put it best to me. They say the best place to be when food sharing is in the kitchen. If you're out 
side, you don't know what's going on inside. And I intend with the CCM to be inside, where decisions are made, policies are crafted. You know how good I felt, ladies and gentlemen, that this COVID-19 pandemic approach. I could sit in the federal cabinet with the prime minister and my colleagues over there and hear about stimulus, hear about what social security is going to do for our people. As I speak tonight, 1,501 persons in Nevis have already benefited from social security. And I'm here to tell you that they continue to write checks, so if you have not got yours yet, don't despair. Social Security is working hard to ensure that you get your benefit. And just so you know, because some said I didn't get anything in April, when you get now, you'll get two, April and May. Because we have committed to three months, April, May, June, and we will go and look again if necessary. And so, you must understand that you must be there. When we sat down in St. Kitts, and I started to talk about the Poverty Alleviation Program, POP. The opposition said it could not happen, but how many people in Nevis now get that little top up every month? Something that benefits us, benefits our people. When we look and we see that students from Nevis are now around the world, I was at a particular event here in Nevis, the foreign minister of Taiwan had visited. And we were trying, of course, to show him the best that Davis had to offer. And I was at a ceremony, a little cocktail ceremony, and I tell you, my heart was full when a young lady I know, in fact, someone I helped to get a scholarship to go to Taiwan, came out, and I hear she said, boo, 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 boo. I said, why is that? And then I hear the man say, boo, 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 boo. I don't want anybody to take this and say, me I speak some funny language, you know. I can't speak the Mandarin, but it was Mandarin they were speaking. Mandarin to each other. And I look at that and I felt proud because that is what leadership is supposed to do. People ask what politics and government is about. Building people. Ensuring that the next generation is better prepared than the last. That is what we are here for. And so when I heard the Mandarin, foreign as it was to my ear, obviously the foreign minister knew what the young lady was saying, and the young lady knew what the foreign minister was saying, and I felt proud. Proud to be the vision, and proud to know that I had had a small role to play in that young person advancing and being where she is today. And ladies and gentlemen, that is what it's about. I was on a show the other day, and they asked me, what is my greatest achievement? And I believe some have talked about buildings and roads, and I said my greatest achievement was one day seeing somebody walking in Charlestown, immaculately attired, whom I had assisted to get a scholarship, and who was now back home and doing well. And when I looked at that post, I said, she could have been on Wall Street. She could have been on Bond Street in London. She could have been anywhere in the world. And that, for me, is why we're here, looking out not for ourselves, but for people. I hear the chatter because it seems to me that our opponents have only two talking points. CCM should not run the same candidate, talking point number one. I don't know why they feel they can tell CCM what to do. Talking point number two, Mark get two salary. Talking point number two. I have not come here tonight for that, but the time will come when I go down into my grip and I take some papers out of the grip. And when I take, we say, Belize, young people don't know about Belize. They might have heard about grip. When I take my papers out of my grip, I will show you that the Honorable Patrice Nisbet, the man who has not brought anything to St. James, in 20 long years, every month while he was legal advisor, he collected not one, not two, not three, but four pay. And I'm not just going to 
spring, I'm going to talk about the numbers. I'm going to point out that even after Patrice Nisbet left the service of the NIA as legal advisor in 2010 and became the Attorney General of St. Christopher and Nevis, that the people of Nevis were still paying his phone bill and continued to pay it for years. These are important things for you to know because they're up and down consumed about money. Who making what? How much money Nevis get? And now I'm hearing the ridiculous argument being made. You know what they're saying? Lord, some of them not got no job and Mark got two. So give them a job. But what is this? Charity? This is the Red Cross? You are here and the intention of you being here is to select the best person to represent you. Not to say, Lord, no, that one didn't work. Some of them done collecting social security and they're still coming back. And I'm saying to you, and I've always marveled at this, that everybody in NRP has all the answers for everything, but none of them are work. Everybody in NRP has all the answers for everything, but none of them are work. Look around, listen to them. The reason why they could be on radio all day, all night, them now work. If they were working, they could help us build Nevis. But they are not, and you have to ask the question. They like to point fingers and say who's corrupt and who's not corrupt. Ask yourself, some people here in Nevis because of COVID are out of work for the last two months and people catching hell. You ask yourself how some NRP fellows have not worked in five, six, seven, eight years and still going around in jacket and tie saying vote for me. How them surviving? How them surviving? And I'm wondering when that $600,000 drop off the CFBC truck, if some drop with them, because I don't understand how some could now go around the world and pontificate and have an opinion on everything and have not worked in years. How are they surviving? And they're coming to you now to tell you you must give them a job. I always recall the story of a fellow I was running against. I will not speak of him because I believe he's out of the politics, but if he were to come back, he will get the same licks that he got before. But I recall I was speaking to someone who said a young gentleman saw him at a bar and accosted him. Sat next to him on the bench and said to him, young man, are you working? The young man said, no, I'm looking for a job. He said, vote for me. I have a plan to create hundreds of jobs in Nevis. The young man said he took a sip of his Guinness and he reflected. And then he said to the fella, but how are you going to find a job for me? Because me now work and you now work. <laughs> me now work, you now work. So how come you have plan to find a job for me and you can't find a job for yourself? Look at them. You see, I didn't come here tonight for that, you know. Because we'll have a time for that. And we'll go through the numbers and we'll go through the figures and we'll talk the story. Because I have not yet finished with the CFBC report. What I did, I pressed pause because COVID came. The grip not open yet. I pressed pause because COVID came. But I will tell you, there'll be hell. Hell. When we start, and this big blue machine as we have started tonight, to deal with the facts and the figures and the history. You know what I love about this thing called politics and this island called Nevis? All of us have a history. All of us have a record. Some have a record in office, and we see what they've done. Some have more house and land now in Nevis than any of us. Get it out of being in office. No wonder when COVID hit, they took the first plane and left. Somebody said of the NRP leader, what a man. What a man. He heard that we must practice social distancing. He distanced himself from Nevis. Took a plane and left and has not been seen since. That is leadership. 
when people want to know that we are with them in their darkest hour, that is leadership. Ladies and gentlemen, there's much to talk about. I want tonight to take the opportunity to say that we know not the day nor the hour when the election is going to come. That is a matter for the Honorable Prime Minister. But CCM, as of tonight, is on the campaign trail. CCM said as a matter of principle that we will not get into the campaign, that we will seek to delay any party politics until such time as we had addressed this COVID-19 pandemic. But the House is now dissolved. The matter is now in the Prime Minister's hands as to when he'll call the date. And we felt that with no COVID cases on the island, this was an opportune time when the big blue machine must be rolled out. And you see here tonight, we are at headquarters. We have created a facility that we will use night after night and time after time. And I appeal to the people of Nevis and to our supporters out there to rally to the cause of the Concerned Citizens Movement. We are the big blue machine. We are the only party that has demonstrated year after year that we have the best interests of the people of Nevis at heart. And we'll continue to do so, whether you're from Gingerland or Town, whether you're from Jessops, Cotton Ground, Westbury, or you're from Brick Hill, whether you're from Brown Hill or Church Ground, we are going to work with you and we will continue to work with you because CCM doesn't pick out, you know. When we are benefiting people, we benefit everybody. We don't pick out. You know what I want to say tonight? I want to recall that in this difficult time, many have said that they're trying to help. But I see some politicians or want to be politicians trying to use people's need as a prop for politics. So then put a tin of sardine and a bag of rice. They put one pack of macaroni and they push them down in a green, green bag. And then in the green bag they put a bottle, that's the NRP symbol. And they put a note with some green ink and they say they want the people to vote for them. And then when they go, they hug up the old ladies and the old gentlemen and take a photo and put it on Facebook. And I say, look at this. Trying to use our people as props. Look at the CCM now. We hand out vouchers, not a soul know who get them. We give people the voucher and we say, go and buy what you want. Because not everybody eat crackers and rice. Go and buy what you want. And I want our people to understand that regardless of the circumstances in which we find ourselves, we must treat our people with dignity. Our people may be in need. They may be vulnerable at this point, but they have their pride and they have their dignity. And so, we now use no blue bag. We now put no note and no hammer. I have hammers to hand out. But that's because we know we're in a political season. And I want our people, I don't even know how we're going to do this thing. Because usually when we hand out things, we have a big rally. And people come and they rally and we blow up the place. You look like you don't have to get them down and blow up your living room. Blow up your bedroom and blow up your kitchen. Because this is a new kind of campaign. Just as there was no manual for COVID, there's no manual for this. But we will certainly get your things to you. And when you say dance and the music plays, you'll have to dance in your living room and your bedroom. But whatever you do, I want you to continue to keep the cause of the Concerned Citizens Movement right in front of you, focused on it, and ensure that we, the three candidates, are sent to Bastia. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight is a night when we promise to be brief. The point of being here is really for you, the island, the Federation, and the world to know that these three candidates are being put forward. In number 10, the Honorable Eric Evelyn. In number 11, the Honorable Alexis Jeffers. And in number 9, the Honorable Mark Grantley. Three honorable gentlemen, young enough to do, but experienced enough to know. 
we have, I believe, the best combination and the best team that could be offered at this time. And we are intending to take that team to Bastyr and to ensure that the people of Nevis have the strongest possible voice at the table. We are, in that regard, campaigning. We will be going as much as the law permits us to take our message to the highways and byways of the island. And we will be back here at campaign headquarters time and time again, engaging with you online as we seek to build the momentum, as we seek to keep that momentum, and as we seek to win this election. The Concerned Citizens Movement, since 1992, has lost only one election, a local election in 2006 that was fraught with difficulty. And then in 2011, they tried to teeth it again, and we catch a big black fox down there in Cox. And we have dealt with that fox to ensure that that fox will no longer be around the CCM grapes. And so we need not worry ourselves anymore. We have come this far by faith. We have come this far by the grace of God. And God has put us here at this point in time to deal with the realities of St. Kitts and Nevis. I would wish to thank the Honorable Prime Minister and the team on St. Kitts, PLP and PAM. We have worked well with them. We will continue to work well with them. And ultimately, the proof of that pudding is in the benefits for the people of Nevis, for the development of the island of Nevis. Alexis Jeffers, while he was here, was reading out some accomplishments. He was reading so fast, I was, I was trying to communicate with him telepathically to say, slow down, slow down. When you read in accomplishments, you must slow down so people get it, it's so keen. Because when you look, and I will not tire of talking about it. Every time I pass that Mondo truck, I marvel that something like that could be in Nevis and through the cabinet in my constituency of St. John's. It's beautiful. And sometimes our people say, nothing is happening. Those naysayers say nothing is happening. But we also have our children in Nevis running on dirt. Dirt truck. Grass, if you're lucky, if rain falling. And then we say we want to develop our young people. But well, how are you going to develop them when they're running on dirt? When their counterparts in St. Kitts have the right facility and are running on the right surface. And so we took that decision. They said all kinds of things. They took close to the dump. Fly going to come over there when the wind blow. All kinds of things. But look at it. Look at it. We have demonstrated time and time again when you ignore the naysayers and you continue to do what you know to be right and you continue to work in the interests of the people, the benefits are there for all to see. I recall that I was at the opening of the new treasury building, a marvelous edifice in the heart of Charlestown. And we recall that fateful morning when it was burnt to the ground in what we then afterwards came to know was arson. Big word, all it means, somebody burn it down. Burn it down. I don't know what they were trying to hide, but the treasury that housed all the records was reduced to ash. And from those ashes, that treasury building now has arisen. And I say praise be to God, and praise be to our relationship because let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, some people thought that this was easy. It was not. The Council of Citizens Movement, we had to persuade the party and our people that joining with somebody was the way to go. You all recall that since 1992, CCM had never joined with anyone. And so we joined with PAM and PLP, and we said we would form Team Unity. And I believe that the relationship between St. Kitts and Nevis now, today, is the best that it has ever been. It is not perfect, but it is the best that it has ever been. And if you know a thing or two about relationships, you know they require work. And they require momentum. You must continue to build on what you have. 
I am saying we have an excellent springboard. We have good momentum. Let us keep that momentum. Let us continue to serve our people with vim, vigor, and vitality and continue to take Nevis forward ever and backward never. Let us continue to work together, ladies and gentlemen, because this team, this CCM team has demonstrated that it has what it takes. Nobody from CCM, none of us, could ever sit around a table in Bastyr and allow the checks of our fellow divisions to be bounced. No division could ever do that. And when I thought that there was a member from Nevis sitting at the table, when the Labour NRP government took the decision to bounce the checks of the people of Nevis, I say that is a treasonous act. It is a treasonous attack on the people of Nevis. And I reflect sometimes, I say, well, NRP people work for government too. So you mean when you bounce the check, you don't care even about your own supporters? And Alexis Jeffers is right. We were right up at Bart Hotel, where the government offices were at the time in the conference room, in cabinet. And the phone started to go off, and NRP was rejoicing. Let them take that. Because they thought they were embarrassing us in Nevis, sitting down in Bastia at the table to try and bring hurt to the people of Nevis. I am saying to the people of number 11, no more. Send somebody who you know can represent you and will represent you. Not somebody just to collect a check. And after 20 years cannot demonstrate a single thing that he has brought to the constituency. Lord, man, when I drive around, I've been in politics now since 2006. Elective politics since 2007. That is 13 years. I told my wife I would do 10. She told me the other day I'm in overtime. 13 years. And of those 13 years, you would recall that from 2006 until 2013, we're in opposition. So in truth, only since 2013, one could say that they have been in government. Seven years. And I look around my constituency. I see the Mondo track in number nine. I see the Treasury building. I see roads in Brazos, in farms, in Brown Hill, Craddock Road. The level of development that we have seen in a short space of time, ladies and gentlemen, is testimony to leadership that puts people first, leadership that is constantly thinking about how we can help our people, not leadership that is all about self, but leadership that is about others. And that is the quality of team that the CCM has brought. That is the quality of man we have in Eric Evelyn, the quality of man that we have in Alexis Jeffers, and the quality of man that you have in me. And so tonight, we declare that we three are the candidates for the Concerned Citizens Movement. Tonight, we declare that we intend to win numbers 9, 10, and 11. And tonight, we declare that we will go to Basti and speak in one voice, loudly, for the people of Nevis. We declare that when we land in Bastia, Bastia must understand that Nevis is in the house. And we don't just come to say, yeah, yeah. We come to say that when anything is being done that impacts our country, of which Nevis is a constituent element, the voice of Nevis must be heard. And the voice of Nevis must, on every occasion, with every policy prescription, be lifted be respected, and that the people of Nevis must fully enjoy the fruits of their citizenship. And I say that with holding no water in my mouth, because I believe that those who are campaigning in St. Kitts will say equally to the people of St. Kitts that they must enjoy the full fruits of their citizenship. We have an golden opportunity here, ladies and gentlemen, a golden opportunity to continue to bring Sink it's and Nevis together. I have said that if team unity doesn't work, then I don't think anything else can work. It is an opportunity to bring our islands together, to bridge the gap in a way that it has never happened before. And I feel proud of that record that now, when I reflect at nights, 
that we, for the first time in our history, have Navy Joint Ambassadors. People from Navy is working in the Foreign Service, representing us abroad. We never had that before. When I can reflect now that we have a Navy Joint Supervisor of Elections, and not a pirate that will fly away, a serious man, a Navy Joint as the Chairman of Social Security, a Navy Joint as Speaker of the National Assembly, Navy Joint on every board, because we sat at the table and we said, listen, the island of Nevis must never be excluded in the country and the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis. We must, and I say that again, we must get the full benefits of our citizenship. It must not be denied to us, and it has been denied for far too long. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is what CCM is about. And that is why I feel so confident with the team that we've assembled, that we will go and we will demand and we will get the full fruits for the people of Nevis. And so we have come, I believe, to the end of the meeting. But you know, we have certain things that we do even when we're wearing jacket and tie. And normally, we don't do that because we come unscripted. Tonight, they bring podium, they bring jacket and tie, they bring all kinds of nice things because we wanted to present ourselves in a good light so that people can take some pictures and things and put us on Facebook. But every time we have a meeting, the people of Nevis and the people of CCM know that I always ask a question and I will ask it so that the virtual audience can answer tonight. CCM, are you ready? Yeah. I can't hear the people on Facebook, you know. I just realized. I ask again, CCM, are you ready? Ladies and gentlemen, this is our time. This is a time for the Concerned Citizens Movement to send three good candidates to Bastia. This is a time for the people of Nevis to speak with one voice and to ensure that they get the full fruits of their citizenship. And the only party that has demonstrated that they can do that is the Concerned Citizens Movement. This big blue machine is now rolling. We are now official, we are now campaigning, and we are campaigning for the federal elections of 2020. It is now time for hammer. Hammer time. hammer time. That is the time. And I am inviting one and all to join this great movement, this great concerned citizens movement. Eric and Alexis, if you are here, can you join me so that our people see the team? They're watching it in the back on the poster, but I would like you up here with me if you're still here, please. We are live and lively on social media, and I'm told we have thousands of people that are viewing, and I would like you here with me so that the people can see us before we sign off for the evening. So if you're here, oh, look at them come. Like when Moses parted the Red Sea, you see good Christian fellows coming to the stage. My brother. Social distancing. <laughs> After you hug me, social distancing. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is our team, the Concerned Citizens Movement team. The Honorable Alexis Jeffers, constituency number 11. The Honorable Eric Evelyn, constituency number 10. And yours truly, constituency number 9. This is the best team for Nevis. We ask you to give us all three and to keep the momentum. Thank you, good night, and God bless you.